The unit cost to produce tubs of ice cream is $13 and the fixed cost is $14,580. The revenue function in dollars is R of X equals negative 2X squared plus 391X. We're asked to find the profit function P of X and then at what quantity is the smallest break even point. Recall that the profit function is equal to the revenue function minus the cost function. We are given the revenue function. We need to find the cost function given we know the unit cost to produce tubs of ice cream is $13 and the fixed cost is $14,580. This indicates the cost function C of X is equal to $13 times X plus 14580 we have the total cost function C of X equals the variable cost plus the fixed cost. And now we can find the profit function, again where the profit function P of X is equal to the revenue function R of X minus the cost function C of X. This gives us the quantity negative two X squared plus 391 X, which is the revenue function, and then minus the quantity 13 X plus 14,580, which is the cost function. It is important we have the cost function in parentheses so that we subtract the entire cost function. And now let's remove the parentheses and combine like terms. We can drop the first set of parentheses. We have negative two X squared plus 391 X. And then we have minus 13 X minus 14,580. And now we combine the like terms, we have two X terms. Our profit function P of X is equal to negative two X squared. And then 391 X minus 13 X gives us plus 378 X. And then we still have minus 14,580. This is the profit function. And now we need to answer the question, at what quantity is the smallest break-even point? We call the break-even point is when the revenue is equal to the cost, and if the revenue is equal to the cost, that's also when the profit is equal to zero. So because we have the profit function, to find out what quantity is the smallest break-even point, we set P of X equal to zero and solve for X. So again, if P of X, the profit function is equal to zero, we have the break-even point, which gives us the equation zero equals negative two X squared plus 378 X minus 14,580. Notice there is a common factor of two on the right side. Let's go ahead and factor out negative two and write the equation as zero equals negative two times the quantity X squared minus 189 X and then plus 7,290. Notice because we factored out negative two, this changed the signs of the terms inside the parentheses. It looks like we could solve this by factoring, but because the coefficient of X is negative 189 and the constant term is 7,290, let's go ahead and use the quadratic formula. Using the trinomial inside the parentheses, we can use A equals one, B equals negative 189, and C is equal to 7,290. This is the benefit of factoring out the negative two. We can use these values for A, B, and C rather than negative two, 378, and negative 14,580. So now using the quadratic formula, we have X equals, in the numerator we have negative B, which is negative, negative 189, plus or minus the square root of the quantity B squared minus four AC, where B squared is the square of negative 189, which we do need in parentheses, and then minus four times A, which is one, times C, which is 7,290. And all of this is divided by two times A, which in our case is two times one. For the next step, let's go ahead and simplify the discriminant, which is the square of negative 189 minus four times one times 7,290, which equals 6,561. This gives us X equals positive 189 plus or minus the square root of 6,561 all divided by two. And the square root of 6,561 is equal to 81, which gives us X equals 189 
plus or minus 81 all divided by 2. Notice we do have two solutions here, but we're looking for at what quantity is the smallest break-even point, meaning we're looking for the smallest value of x. Let's go ahead and find both solutions, though. Let's say x sub 1 is equal to the smaller value of 189 minus 81 divided by 2, which gives us 108 divided by 2, which is 54. And the larger solution, x sub 2, is equal to 189 plus 81 divided by 2, which equals 270 divided by 2, which is equal to 135. But again, because we're looking for at what quantity is the smallest break-even point, our answer is 54 tubs of ice cream. This is the smallest quantity at which the company breaks even, meaning, meaning the revenue is equal to the cost or the profit is equal to zero. Before we go, let's verify this graphically. One way to check the solution graphically would be to graph the revenue and cost functions on the same coordinate plane, which we have here. We have the revenue function graphed in pink and the cost function graphed in yellow. The points of intersection represent the break-even points. Notice we have one at x equals 54 and one at x equals 135. The second way to verify the answer would be to graph the profit function and look for the zeros or x-intercepts. So in this graph, we have the profit function in white if we take a look at the graph, we have x-intercepts at x equals 54, as well as x equals 135. Once again, both methods verify our work is correct. I hope you found this helpful.